The General Motors LS7 engine is legendary, but what is the deal with the valve drop issue? I'm going to give you the info and I'm going to tell you what you should do about it. Buckle up, this is going to be a ride. The LS7 engine that was in the C6 Corvette Z06 as well as the 5th generation Camaro Z28 is uh, legendary and has a great reputation for making incredible naturally, as naturally aspirated power. But, on the other hand, it's got a really bad reputation for dropping the exhaust valve into the combustion chamber and thereby grenading the engine. Now, before I get into the guts of this, what I need you to do, if you haven't already, is hit that subscribe button below. You're going to want to because i got some really cool things coming down the line with this car, as well as some other cool garage stuff this season. So you're definitely not going to want to miss out on that. Having said that, here we go. Now, I've been around the automotive world for quite a long time now. And there are very few issues that I've seen that has generated this many questions and this much frustration from the people that hear the questions. The C6 Corvette Z06 as well as that 5th generation Camaro Z28 have dropped to really affordable levels, levels at least according compared to their original sticker price. They, they're about half of what they originally cost now. So therefore, a lot of people are picking them up on the secondary market because they are honestly one of the best performance values out there. But the problem is the issue with the LS7 cylinder heads. You can't go to a Corvette Facebook group or a forum and not see at least once a week or more somebody asking a question about it. And that's usually met with uh, one of a few typical responses. Usually a complaint of, do we have to hash this out again? Why is this still a discussion? Use the search. Google that sh Sometimes people are polite enough just to answer it, but it's definitely not the first time they've answered the question. So this tells me two things. One, people still want some details about it and they need to know what they should do about it if they have a car with an LS7 engine or if they're looking to buy a car with an LS7 engine. And two, people are very, very, very tired of seeing it asked and having to explain it. In fact, there was a recent thread on Corvette Forum titled, Dead Horse. What do you think it was about? There's actually even a class action lawsuit about it but it doesn't look like it's gonna go anywhere. I don't think there's ever gonna be an answer that everybody agrees on. And um, like anything else, your mileage may vary, but here's what I think of the situation. This is so people that don't know about it don't have to ask, and people that are tired of hearing about it ask can send them to this very video. So here's the questions and answers, again, based on my research. First thing, is this valve issue in the LS7 engine really a problem? Yes, it actually is a problem. In fact, General Motors sort of acknowledged it. On October 11, 2012, Chevrolet Customer Service did release a statement on it claiming that it was a very, very small amount of, of vehicles that suffered this problem and only affected certain model years. However, real-world reports don't quite mirror what Chevrolet had to say about that. General Motors came up with what's called the wiggle test, but even then they found out that uh, in testing that it wasn't exactly very accurate and a lot of uh, cylinder heads failed that test and so they then deemed that it wasn't accurate. Next question, how often does it happen? No one really knows. If you exclude what General Motors had to say about it, there's really not going to be any way to tell altogether unless General Motors releases another statement about it, which I don't believe that they ever will. The big question that most people ask. I have an LS7 engine. Will it happen to me? It might. It might not. Technically, any engine can fail due to a faulty part. Pretty ambiguous, huh? Well, that's kind of the way it is in this case. There's just too many unknowns when it comes down to it. But what I do know is that if you do a Google search for LS7 engine failure, you'll see a whole lot of carnage. So here's what to do at a bare minimum if you have an LS7 engine in your car. A member on Corvette Forum named Big Vet 427 said it best. The only way to know if your LS7 engine valve guides need to be replaced is if it drops the valve into the engine requiring you to buy a new engine. That's, that's, how, you, that's how you know. The option is to have a competent shop fix your LS7 cylinder heads. So if you have an LS7 engine, yes, you need to have them fixed. Otherwise, you are just rolling the dice. And if you're planning on buying a car with an LS7 engine in it, just factor in having to have those heads pulled and have them fixed. How much will it cost? The fix can run anywhere. $1,400. Uh, 
and, and up. It really depends on what you want to get out of it. But $1,400 to $2,000 is a heck of a lot better than having to absorb the cost of a $15,000 engine, sometimes including installation and tuning. So let me ask you this. You drop $40,000 plus on a car. Do you want to run the risk of having to replace the engine that costs one-third of that car's cost? So who can fix it? Lots of different places. Just make sure you go with a competent shop. There's a ton of them. Uh, Advanced Induction, American Heritage Performance, also known as AHP, uh, Frankenstein, Mammal Mo Motorsports, Lingenfelder, West Coast Cylinder Heads. Um, there's, there's, there's quite a bunch more. Just make sure they know what they're doing if you go with one of them. The ones that I've listed definitely do. I mean, you almost can't go wrong with those because they all have solid experience in this and they'll be able to tell you that. Like anything else, it all depends on how much you want to spend. And like cold air intakes, some say one is better, Others say the other is better. It really comes down to what you need out of it and to find better. Better price, better value, better reputation, better materials, better equipment, uh, better turnaround time. It, it all depends on what you need to have out of it. But again, in my opinion, you need to get this fixed by somebody. If you're handy, you can pull the heads yourself and replace them yourself and have somebody that, again, knows the LS7 engine cylinder head, just somebody that can do the install of the valve guides and hone them, make sure that they're concentric because that was the fault to begin with, that they weren't quite concentric. Your problem is solved. Go out and enjoy your car. Plus, while you have the heads off, and if you want more power out of it, you can have the heads ported, have them milled, throw in another cam, a different camshaft. All those companies that I mentioned, they've got a great head and cam kit that you can pick up that'll really make your car scream. But the bottom line here is that if you have an LS7 engine, just get it done, period. Too many people have said, well, I'll drive it, it's not going to happen to me, or I'll take care of it next season or whatever, and then they ended up saying, oh man, it happened to me, and now i got to figure out a way to replace a $15,000 engine. Not everybody has that luxury. Some people can say, I'll just drive it until it blows up, and then I'll just build a better, stronger one. That's a great option if you have it, but not everybody does, <laughs> including me. So obviously... I'm going to have mine fixed. I actually had it planned before I even bought the vehicle. And that's why you haven't seen me make more videos of me driving the car. It's because I'm waiting to have them fixed. I don't want to, I just can't feel comfortable driving this car until I have it fixed, worried that I may have to sell a kidney to buy a new engine for it. So now here's the last question that you're probably wondering. Who am I going to go with for cylinder head fix for this car? That's something that I'm going to drop in my next video. That's why you need to subscribe below and be notified when I do. So that's my opinion. Just like anything else, there's really no right or wrong answer, but based on my research, those are my thoughts. If you've got an LS7 engine in your car, or you're planning on buying a car that has one, you need to have them fixed or plan to have them fixed soon. It sure beats buying a whole new engine. I hope this helps somebody. I hope it helps settle the debate. I hope it helps people to not have to ask the question on the forums and in the Facebook groups. And I think just as importantly, I hope it helps people not be so frustrated by seeing other people post it in the Corvette forums or Facebook groups. I'll see you in my next video when I talk about my heads and maybe camshaft as well. Thanks for watching. <laughs>